A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Displayed here are the list of news articles that we have chosen for today's discussion. Now without wasting much time, let's get into the news article discussion. Now have a look at this news article. See this news article speaks about the pneumococcal conjugate vaccines. See in Tamil Nadu no, the government health centers have been running short of this pneumococcal conjugate vaccines in the last 2 to 3 months. This is due to less supply from the union government than the state government's requirement. So this is the crux of the news article given here. And in this context, let's learn about pneumonia disease, its causes, spread, symptoms and treatment. And specifically, let us learn about the pneumococcal conjugate vaccines. Okay. See, pneumonia is a form of respiratory infection that affects the lungs. Know that the lungs are made up of small air sacs called alveoli. When a healthy person breathes, the alveoli are filled with air. But when an individual has pneumonia, the alveoli are filled with pus and fluid which makes breathing painful and limits the intake of oxygen. Okay. See, pneumonia is caused by various infectious agents including viruses, bacteria and fungi. The most common bacteria that cause pneumonia are Streptococcus pneumonia, Mycoplasma pneumoniae and Haemophilus influenza type B. Then the most common viruses that cause pneumonia are Influenza, the flu virus and respiratory sensitial virus and Pneumocystis durovsi is the most common fungal cause. Okay. Now coming to the spread, pneumonia can be spread through airborne droplets from coughing or sneezing. Then it also spreads through fluids like blood during childbirth and also from the contaminated surfaces. Okay, now let's see about the symptoms. The symptoms of pneumonia include rapid or different breathing, then chest pain, cough, headache, fever, loss of appetite, wheezing, etc. So having seen the symptoms and causes, let's see about the treatment if there is available. See pneumonia can be treated at home but in severe cases the patient needs to be hospitalized and antibiotics should be given for a speedy recovery. Okay. Now we all know that prevention is always better than cure. So let's see about the preventive measures. See vaccines are an important and effective way to prevent both bacterial and viral infections in children and adults. The pneumococcal conjugate vaccine and HIB containing pentavalent vaccine are some of the vaccines used in India to prevent pneumonia. Intake of adequate nutrition and reducing the indoor air pollution are some of the other measures to prevent pneumonia. Okay, now let's see about the pneumococcal conjugate vaccines. See the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine can protect both children and adults from pneumococcal disease. This vaccine contains a mix of several bacteria of the pneumococci family which causes pneumonia. Hence the term conjugate is included in the name of the vaccine. Okay. See this vaccine is also highly effective against other diseases like bronchitis, sinusitis, meningitis, sepsis, bacteria mea, etc. Also pneumococcal conjugate vaccines have reduced the burden of antibiotic resistant bacterial disease globally. This was said in a Lancet study report that was quoted in the year 2017. Note that Pneumocil is India's first fully indigenously developed pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. It was developed by the Serum Institute of India and was introduced in December 2020. Okay, so that's all you have to know about this pneumonia or the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. See, these science related topics are very much important for your preliminary examination. Okay, so whatever facts that has been provided in this discussion, make a note of it and use it for your prelims preparation. Okay, so with these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Have a look at this editorial article. This editorial article, as its title aptly says, focuses on the global south's assertion in geopolitics. Okay, here. What is Global South? See, the term Global South is used to identify regions within South America, Asia, Africa and Oceania. See, the Global South mainly includes the developing countries. Okay. And these countries are also called the third world countries. Look at this map here. In this map, the areas highlighted by red represent the third world and Global South countries. Okay. 
and the editorial mainly focuses on the increasing bargaining power of the global south and that these countries are using this bargaining power to maintain their autonomy okay see this is the basic essence of the editorial now in this discussion let us see all points mentioned in the editorial in detail before that the syllabus relevant to the news article is given here for your reference just go through it now let us start the discussion by seeing the reasons for the rising bargaining power of the global south see the first reason is the us desire to maintain its hegemony in geopolitics to understand this we have to go back in history first before the world wars during the age of colonialism it was the erstwhile british empire that had ultimate power over global geopolitics am i right and it was essentially a unipolar world with the british empire at its center but what happened after the two world wars the british empire lost its central position and in its place came the us and ussr and from 1945 to the demise of the ussr the world was bipolar with the us on one side and ussr on the other side then after the collapse of the ussr the world has again become unipolar with the us at the center this has been the scheme of things for the past 3 decades but now with the rise of china the us is worried that its position is threatened this scenario is called the thucydides trap see the thucydides is a greek historian who lived in the 4th century bce he said when a new power is rising which is threatening an already established power then war or a conflict is inevitable and this is called the thucydides trap here the established power is the us and the rising new power is china okay so based on this hypothesis a conflict is inevitable so both the sides china and the us are fishing for allies so that they will stand by them when conflict eventually arises so both the us and china are trying to win over countries from the global south this is the first reason why the bargaining power of the global power is rising okay now comes the second reason it is the us desire to prevent the reemergence of russia see after the collapse of the erstwhile ussr russia's sphere of influence has reduced but under putin's regime Russia is trying to recapture its old dominant position. This is why Putin invaded Ukraine and this is a worrying thing for the US. To counter Russia in Ukraine, the West led by the US provided military aid to Ukraine. In addition to this, they also imposed sanctions against Russia to cripple its economy. But were the West led sanctions effective? No. Russia started increasing its trade with China, India and other countries of the global south. So for the sanctions to be effective, the US need support of the global south. So this is the other reason why the bargaining power of the global south has increased in recent times. Okay? Now having seen this, let us see the reasons as to why the countries of global south are not picking up sides and trying to remain independent. See the major reason is mistrust. The countries of the global south mistrust both the US and China. Why do countries mistrust the US? See all the US policies are motivated by self-interest. The US is now sweet talking with countries like India not because they like our country, but currently they need our country's support. See let me quote some instances where selfishness of the US and the western democracies in general got exposed. First instance was during the wake of the first wave of the pandemic. When the developing countries asked the western countries for an one time exception for patents for the COVID-19 vaccine, they rejected it. They acted purely on self-interest and their actions were not guided by morals. The second instance was during the Syrian refugee crisis. No countries in Europe accepted the refugees in open arms, but now they are readily accepting refugees from Ukraine. This shows the racial mindset of the US and other western countries. Last one, the present US Federal Reserve action, which resulted in the depreciation of currencies of developing countries. See the US Fed 
increase the interest rate this resulted in investors pulling out money from stock markets of developing countries this has resulted in collapse of exchange rates for various developing countries and this move of the us fed without consulting with other countries has angered the global south so all these instances raised the mistrust surrounding the us now we'll see why do countries mistrust china see the global south's mistrust of china is self explanatory am i right first china is militarily very aggressive it has border disputes with all its neighboring countries and the way in which china is fastly militarizing is also a concern for other countries and second is the debt trap diplomacy of china we have seen this concept so many times am i right how china is extending unviable loans to developing countries and making them fall into debt and this also increases the mistrust Finally almost all countries in the world are having a negative balance of trade with China this is due to China dumping its good in other countries see these are the reasons for the global south's mistrust for China so since they mistrust both the sides the countries of the global south are trying to stay neutral while staying neutral they are not isolating themselves instead they are engaging with both the western bloc and eastern bloc The recent example for this is how India is trying to balance its relationship between the US and Russia. What is India doing here? India is engaging with both the US and Russia but not angering both countries. Okay? See these are the points discussed in the editorial. And finally before concluding, the author of the editorial mentions that the countries of the global south must use this bargaining power in order to bring the developed countries to the negotiating table. and bring long term solutions in the areas of global concerns like climate change ecological devastation raising inequalities and increasing militarization the global south must use this opportunity to make the world more inclusive okay so that's all regarding this discussion see in this discussion we discussed why the west and the east are mistrusted by the global south and we saw who are the global south countries who are called the third world see in this we had covered the multilateral relationship regarding us china and the global south countries this is very much important for your mains examination so kindly note down each and every points in this discussion and utilize it in your main answers okay so with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next news article discussion have a look at this news article see the news article is about the special tourist circuit announced by the central government this tourist circuit encompassed five key sites associated with dr b r ambedkar The five sites selected by the government include Mo his birthplace then London where he resided and studied then Nagpur here also Baba Saheb studied okay and then Delhi where he passed away and finally Mumbai where he was cremated see this circuit was announced to increase the tourism potential of these areas but the issue here is the various ambedkarites and dalit scholars are of the opinion that the places in the circuit does not do justice to the life of dr b r ambedkar instead they want to add places like raigarh district of maharashtra where mahar satyagraha was held and they wanted to add eravada jail where puna pact was signed and they also wanted to add sri lanka where baba saheb attended the buddhist conclave these sites they said highlighted the true legacy of dr b r ambedkar and this is about the news article so in this discussion we'll see some major events in dr b r ambedkar's life that are important for our examination okay see 1924 ambedkar started bahishkrit hitakarni sabha and this is to promote education and socio economic improvements among the dalits ambedkar also started some journals for empowering the so called depressed class the journals include moknayak bahishkrit bharat samat and janata Then in 1927 he organized the Mahar Satyagraha. The Satyagraha was organized to ensure the people from the depressed classes have access to water from the Mahat water tank. Through the Satyagraha he tried to ensure basic human rights. Then in 1930 he organized a temple entry movement in the Kala Ram temple at Nashik. Through this movement no he tried to ensure social justice. 
see dr b r ambedkar participated in all the three round table conferences that were held between 1930 and 1932 while participating in the conference he represented the interest of the people of the depressed class then in 1932 when british prime minister ramsay macdonnell introduced the communal award the communal award was announced to provide separate electorates to the depressed classes Mahatma Gandhi opposed it and undertook the fast until death while lodged in the Aravada jail. So Dr. B. R. Ambedkar signed the Pune Pact in 1932 and the Pune Pact instead of providing separate electorate guaranteed reservation for the people of the depressed class. Here note that Pune Pact was signed between Ambedkar on behalf of the depressed class among Hindus and Madan Mohan Malaviya on behalf of the other Hindus. Okay? Then in 1936 Ambedkar formed the Independent Labour Party through this party he opposed the brahmanical and capitalist structures in India and supported the Indian working class he also sought to dismantle the caste system then in 1942 this party was transformed into All India Scheduled Caste Federation and as we all know Ambedkar played a crucial role in drafting the Indian Constitution He was the chairman of the seven member drafting committee which was tasked with drafting India's new constitution and in 1956 at a place called Diksha Bhumi at Nagpur Ambedkar along with his followers converted to Buddhism he did so arguing that converting to Buddhism is the only way for the people of the Dalit community to gain equality see whatever we have discussed in this news article or most important facts about ambedkar and some areas of potential preliminary questions okay so we took this news article in order to make it very much useful for your preliminary examination okay so with these key points and facts let's move on to the next news article discussion have a look at this news article this news article speaks about the lok ayukta This is a news because yesterday the Supreme Court has stayed the Lok Ayukta probe against former Karnataka Chief Minister. This is over a bribery charge and this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let's learn about Lokpal and Lok Ayukta. First, let us take up the Lokpal. See, the Lokpal is established under the Lokpal and Lok Ayukta Act 2013. The main function of the Lokpal is to enquire and investigate into allegations of corruption against public functionaries who are falling within the ambit of this act. Okay. Now let us see about the membership. See the Lokpal consists of a chairperson and the member shall not exceed 8 people. Note that the person to be appointed as a chairperson of the Lokpal must be either the present or former chief justice of india or the present or former judge of the supreme court or an eminent person with integrity and outstanding ability who must possess special knowledge and a minimum experience of 25 years in matters relating to anti corruption policy or you can say public administration vigilance finance including insurance and banking the law and management So this is all about the chairperson. Now speaking about the members, see fifty percent out of the total members shall be judicial members. They must be either a former judge of the Supreme Court or a former Chief Justice of the High Court. Coming to the remaining fifty percent members, they have to fulfil the eligibility conditions same as an eminent person which I mentioned earlier. Okay. Also know that at least half of the Lokpal members must be from. scheduled tribes scheduled caste other backward classes minorities and women this is about the membership now talking about the appointment the chairperson and the members are appointed by the president on the recommendations of a selection committee the selection committee consists of the prime minister as a chairperson then the members include the speaker of the lok sabha leader of opposition in the lok sabha then chief justice of india or a judge of a supreme court nominated by him and one eminent jurist okay now we'll focus on its jurisdiction see the lokpal has jurisdiction to inquire into allegations of corruption against public functionaries who are or who have been in the office including the prime minister ministers in the union government then member of parliament group a b c d officers and the officials of the union government see also functionaries of any board corporation society trust or autonomous body either established by an act of parliament 
or wholly or partly funded by the union or state government or also covered under the ambit of the Lokpal. Then it also covers any society or trust or body that receives foreign contributions above rupees 10 lakh. So this is all about the Lokpal. Okay. See for the center we are having Lokpal. And for the states, we have Lokayukta. It was also established under the Lokpal and Lokayukta Act 2013. Its structure is not the same in all states. Some states have created only Lokayukta and some states created both Lokayuktas and Upalokayuktas. Whereas some states have designated officials as Lokpal. Here the chairperson and the members are appointed by the governor of the respective state on the recommendations of a selection committee. Here the selection committee will consist of the chief minister as the chairperson and the members include the speaker of the legislative assembly, leader of opposition in the legislative assembly. Okay. Then for states, those who are having legislative council, no, the selection committee should also include the chairman of the legislative council and the leader of opposition in the legislative council. Note that while selection, the chief minister has to consult with the chief justice of high court. Like I mentioned already, there is no uniformity regarding the jurisdiction of the Lokayukta in all states. See, annually, the Lokayukta presents a consolidated report on its performance to the governor of the state. Then the governor places this report before the state legislature and we have to note here that the recommendations made by the Lokayukta are only advisory and not binding on the state government. Okay, so that's all regarding this news article. See, in this discussion, we saw about Lokpal and Lokayukta. See, these are some static topics from polity where you can expect straightforward preliminary questions. Okay. So these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is the preliminary practice question discussion. See today we have three questions in which two I will be discussing and one will be a quiz question for you. Okay, now let me take up the first question. See this is a previous year question that is taken from 2020 prelims. Okay, and it is regarding the pneumococcal conjugate vaccines. Since three statements are given, let me go ahead with elimination technique. Okay. Now, let me take the statement 3 first of all. Okay. See, these vaccines have no side effects and cause no allergic reactions. See, this statement is absolutely incorrect because take any vaccine, it will have some side effects and some allergic reactions. So, you can easily eliminate two options if you know that statement 3 is incorrect. What are they? Option C and D. Okay. Now going ahead with other two options, if you just know statement 2 is correct or incorrect, you can arrive at the answer. Now read statement 2, dependence on antibiotics that are not effective against drug resistant bacteria can be reduced. See this statement is correct. Take the Lancet journal, see the Lancet journal in a study said that the pneumococcal conjugate vaccines have reduced the burden of antibiotic resistant bacterial diseases globally. So ultimately the dependence on antibiotics that are not effective against drug resistant bacteria can be reduced. That is why we say that statement 2 is correct. Okay. Now what will be the answer? Since the question is demanding for correct statements, the answer here will be option B 1 and 2 only. Okay. Now let me justify why statement 1 is correct. See this we saw ultimately in the discussion itself. That is apart from pneumonia, the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine is also highly effective against other diseases like bronchitis, sinusitis, bacteria mea, meningitis, sepsis, etc. etc. So that is why I said statement 1 is also correct. Okay. Now finally what is the answer for this question? It is option B 1 and 2 only. Okay. Now moving on to the second question. Who among the following attended all the three roundtable conferences? Here three names are given. Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, Rattai Malai Srinivasan and Tej Bahadur Sapru. What is the answer for this question? Yes, the answer is option C, 1 and 3 only. See, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar attended. You are sure about it. We just now saw in the discussion. And along with him, Tej Bahadur Sapru is the one who attended all the three conferences. When you take Rattai Malai Srinivasan, he assisted Dr. B.R. Ambedkar in the first two roundtable conferences alone. Who is Rattai Malai Srinivasan? He is one of the important Dalit leader from Tamil Nadu. Okay. So what is the answer for this question? The answer is option C, 1 and 3 only. And now displayed here is a quiz question for you. See, if you had keenly listened to the discussion, it is a very easy question. So go through the discussion one more time and try answering the question. Post your answers in the comment section 
and the right answer will be posted in the comment section itself okay and displayed here is a mains practice question for you see go through the question try writing answer for the questions and it will definitely help you in improving your writing skills okay and that's all for today's discussion if you like this video do like share and comment and don't forget to subscribe to the shankar is academy's youtube channel thank you for listening